Next we look at trends in ionic radius. So starting with group 1, which form 1 plus ions, the ionic radius of lithium is 76 times 10 to the negative 12 meters, and as we go down group 1, you can see that the ionic radius is increasing. If we look at the trend in ionic radius across a period, for example period 3, you can see that the ionic radius decreases from sodium to phosphorus, but then when we get to sulfur, it starts to increase again. That's because we are forming positive ions for sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon and phosphorus, and we are forming negative ions for sulfur and chlorine. Next we'll compare the ionic radius at the bottom to the atomic radius at the top. So let's look at lithium. Lithium forms 1 plus ions, and you can see that the ionic radius is smaller than the atomic radius. Let's look at another example, magnesium. Magnesium forms 2 plus ions, and the ionic radius is smaller than the atomic radius. And one more example, aluminium, which forms 3 plus ions, again the ionic radius is smaller than the atomic radius. So from these three examples, we can see that positive ions are smaller than their parent atoms. Next we'll have a look at negative ions, starting with oxygen. So oxygen forms a 2 negative ion, and you can see that the ionic radius is 140 times 10 to the negative 12 meters, and the atomic radius is 64 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. So for negative ions, the ionic radius is greater than the atomic radius. Let's look at chlorine. Chlorine forms 1 negative ions, and you can see that the ionic radius at the bottom here is bigger than the atomic radius. So from these examples, we can see that negative ions are bigger than their parent atoms. So next we'll have a look at the reasons for this. Let's look at positive ions or cations first. Here we have the sodium atom. The electronic configuration of the sodium atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. It has three occupied energy levels with one electron in the valence shell. When sodium forms ions, it loses this outer electron in the n equals 3 energy level to form a 1 plus ion. So here we have the sodium ion and the electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So we've lost the outer electron and we only have two main energy levels. Next we'll compare the number of protons, electrons and occupied energy levels in the atom and the ion. So the atom we have 11 protons, 11 electrons and 3 occupied energy levels. In the ion we have 11 protons, 10 electrons and 2 occupied energy levels. So a positive ion is smaller than the parent atom. The sodium ion has less occupied energy levels than the sodium atom. The ion has fewer electrons than protons, which we can see here, it has 11 protons and only 10 electrons, so the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and valence electrons increases, pulling in the remaining electrons, making the positive ion smaller. Next we look at negative ions. Here we have the chlorine atom. The electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. We have three occupied energy levels with seven valence electrons. The chlorine atom can gain one electron to form the chloride ion, which has a one negative charge. The electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Next we'll compare the number of protons, electrons and occupied energy levels. So for the atom we have 17 protons, 17 electrons and 3 occupied energy levels. For the chloride ion we have 17 protons, 18 electrons and 3 occupied energy levels. So as you can see from the atomic radius of the chloride ion and the chlorine atom, a negative ion is bigger than the parent atom. And here's the explanation for this. The ion has more electrons than protons, so the electrostatic attraction between the nucleus and valence electrons decreases, meaning the electrons are held less tightly, making the negative ion bigger. So that's all from the trends in ionic and atomic radius. Don't forget, if you look in the video description, you'll find a link to a worksheet complete with answers.